Things kicked off with a woman looking at a boy with lust. The boy groaned as he woke up. He discovered the woman on top of him and freaked out. He quickly jumped out of bed instinctively. The woman can't believe that the drug she used wore off quickly. She found the boy more attractive now that he was awake. The protagonist, Chu Ching, stared in a daze and realized that he had been reborn. 300 years ago, he accidentally entered the fairy realm and became a cultivator. He worked hard as a swordsman cultivator. Just when he was making a breakthrough to reach the realm of eternity, he accidentally entered the Hall of Space and Time and found himself back on Earth when he was 17 years old. However, he doesn't know why he was with a woman who was ready to gobble him up. Chu Ching apologizes as he wears a shirt. The woman named Ye Chenxi claimed that she doesn't let go of her prey. Chu Ching ignored her words, and Ye Chenxi got offended. She grabbed Chu Ching's arm and our protagonist realized how strong Ye Chenxi was. Chu Ching grabbed Ye Chenxi with his other hand and released cultivation energy, but his current body didn't have enough energy. Chu Ching got repelled off and discovered his uniform. He grabbed them and dashed outside, leaving Ye Chenxi, who was impressed that a boy had escaped from her. She swore to never let go of Chu Ching. Chu Ching finally got outside and looked around. He was glad to return to Earth after 300 long years. Just then, he noticed a woman scolding a man who wanted the woman to buy him a bag. The couple left, and Chu Ching was pushed aside by a huge woman working at a nearby construction site with either woman. Chu Ching noticed something wrong. He looked around and noticed that people were acting differently compared to his world before. In the nearby library, Chu Ching found out that a cataclysm happened during ancient times altering the physiology of women and making them smarter and stronger. A woman named Kong Mo was born and created the ideology that women are far superior to men. It is already the 21st century, and men are seen as inferiors. A man was to blame during extramarital affairs, and it was normal for women to chase men. Chu Ching can't believe the world has become reversed compared to before. Chu Ching went back home and was happy to discover his father, quickly hugging him. Lin Yuantu wondered why Chu Ching was back home early. Suddenly, he sniffed women's perfume on his son and warned Chu Ching that it was dangerous for a handsome man like him to get tangled with random women. He reminded Chu Ching about the news of a boy getting taken advantage of. He was worried about Chu Ching's future, unlike Chu Ching's sister, who was known to be jobless. Chu Ching then asked for his mother's whereabouts. Lin Yuantu explained that she was still working. Chu Ching then mentioned checking on his older sister. He sneakily opened the door to his sister's room and took a peek. His sister Chu Xiao was busy watching something online with a tissue for certain purposes on the side. Chu Ching closed the door, wondered if he was in a dream, and screamed like a madman, surprising his busy sister. Frustrated, Chu Xiao wondered what was wrong and came out of her room. Chu Ching briefly glared at her and asked if she was watching porn. Chu Xiao confidently corrected him, saying that it is the age of live broadcasting nowadays. She told her little brother that things like these were not for him and left a distraught Chu Ching. That night, Chu Xiao asked Lin Yuantu for money to eat outside. Lin Yuantu feels frustrated that the jobless Chu Xiao is making up reasons like starting a business with her friends. He scolded Chu Xiao and compared her to her brother. Nevertheless, he gave Chu Xiao the money she asked for and reminded her to save some money sometimes. Chu Ching wondered if it was fine to let her go. But Lin Yuantu claimed it was fine as long as she stayed out of trouble. Chu Ching fully realized what the world had become. Just then, the door opened, and Chu Tianan appeared. Chu Ching quickly ran over to hug his mother. Chu Tianan wondered if Chu Ching wanted an allowance and gave him a lot. Chu Ching couldn't believe his stingy mother was being generous. He tried to return it, but Chu Tianan told him to keep it as long as he studied hard. He observed how his father was behaving towards his mom, and found it very awkward and repulsive that his mom was the main earner of the family while his father was shouldering the duties typically associated with a wife. He wondered if his own life would follow a similar path. Unable to tolerate the scene any longer, he left his parents and retreated to his room. Inside his room, he opened a drawer and discovered several letters. He realized that he had been the school flower during his time at secondary school. Feeling irritated, he planned to cultivate and leave the reversed world. Since the world's aura was rich and pure, Chu Ching started cultivating it so he could open the Hall of Space and Time. This was all to return to his original world and get away from the one he wandered into. Hours passed by, and Chu Ching noticed how his senses had sharpened. He tested out his skills and checked his parents' and sisters' rooms. Seeing that her sister was not home yet, Chu Ching remembered that he was in a reversed world where girls could be outside all they wanted. Just then, his sister called and asked Chu Ching to listen. Chu Xiao claimed that she was in trouble. She asked Chu Ching not to tell their parents or the police. Chu Cheng wondered what happened. 
but Chu Xiao told him to bring her black bag to a certain bar. A woman then took over the conversation and threatened to harm Chu Xiao. The call ended, and Chu Qing wore a frightening expression. He quickly got the bag and leaped out of the apartment building, swearing not to let anyone mess with his family. He then jumped on the roofs like a ninja. At the bar, Chu Qing arrived and threw the bag on a table. He asked the blue-haired woman to let Chu Xiao go. The woman got interested in Chu Qing, but our protagonist ignored her words and opened the bag full of money. Chu Xiao wondered why there was money in there, but Chu Qing didn't even know why. Chu Xiao then told Zhou, the leader of the women around, that a person named Lin asked her to keep the bag for a while. Zhou got mad since Lin Xiaowan stole her money and ordered her goons to let Chu Xiao go. Chu Xiao thanked Zhou and grabbed Chu Qing. However, Zhou stopped them since she wanted her cute little brother. Chu Xiao covered for Chu Qing and threatened Zhou to let her brother go. Zhou laughed out loud and claimed that only one of the siblings could go. Chu Xiao then offered herself and asked Chu Qing to go home first, since it was not safe for a man to solve the situation. Chu Qing moved his sister aside and kicked the table as he asked if Zhou really wanted him to remain. Everyone was shocked to see a rowdy male in front of them. Zhou swore to torture Chu Qing on her bed. Just then, Chu Qing slapped Zhou, much to Chu Xiao's shock. Zhou fought back with a punch but Chu Qing blocked it with a punch too. After being pushed back, Chu Qing found the reverse world's female strength interesting. Zhou ordered her goons to attack Chu Qing. Chu Qing quickly dodged and started a spinning attack like a Beyblade. Everyone fell to the ground, and Chu Qing held his sister. Suddenly Zhou pointed a gun toward the siblings. Chu Xiao covered for Chu Qing. Zhou swore to kill the two of them. Chu Qing's expression suddenly got serious, but just then, the door opened. A familiar, beautiful woman suddenly appeared. Xiao Chengxi cheerfully greeted Chu Qing, who suddenly had a flashback to the scenes from the first chapter. He wondered why she was there, and Ye Chengxi claimed that she owned the place. She ordered Zhou to scram, but Zhou claimed that Ye Chengxi was breaking the rules. Ye Chengxi's expression darkened, and she ordered her bodyguards to cut Zhou's limbs and throw her outside. Ye Chengxi wondered if Chu Qing liked her present. Chu Qing wondered why she was being kind to him, and Ye Chengxi claimed that Chu Qing was the first man to ever talk back to her. Ye Chengxi claimed Chu Qing as her boyfriend number 36. Chu Qing declined after hearing that. Ye Chengxi was worried that a frail looking boy like Chu Qing would end up as a prostitute. Chu Qing smirked and wondered if Ye Chengxi was stronger than her. Chu Xiao got worried for her brother. Chu Qing suggested they play a game together to see who was stronger. The deal was that if he won, Ye Chengxi wouldn't disturb him anymore, but if Ye Chengxi won, Chu Qing would become her boyfriend. They soon began the game. While women in this world are extraordinary and see men as insignificant, Ye Chengxi surprised Chu Qing with her extraordinary strength. However, Chu Qing seeks to prove that he isn't an ordinary man. Chen Shi was caught off guard as Chu Qing slammed her arm on the table. Chu Hai reminded Ye Chengxi about their bet and dragged his sister away with him. Ye Chengxi's aura suddenly became intimidating. A guard offered her help to chase Chu Qing, but Ye Chengxi slapped her while claiming that she still hadn't lost to Chu Qing yet. She called out to Chu Qing and offered it to her husband so no one could ever touch him. Chu Qing claimed that men don't need women's protection at all, making the others think that he was crazy. Ye Chengxi exclaimed that women are the pillars of the world, and everyone agreed that fewer men were excelling in all fields. Chu Qing confronted Ye Chengxi and exclaimed that men can strive and fight to get better and get women as rewards instead. Ye Chen Shi can't help but smile while watching Chu Qing leave the bar. Because Chu Qing was her type, she swore not to let him go. A guard reminded her about something, but Ye Chen Shi just brushed it off. On the way home, Chu Xiao wondered if Chu Qing would tell their parents about what happened. Of course Chu Qing will tattle on her and Chu Xiao can't believe that she is being threatened. She then wondered how Chu Qing suddenly got strong. She also mentioned how it would be great to marry Ye Chen Shi since she was the heiress of an important family. Chu Qing told her sister to shut up. Back at home, while Chu Qing was practicing his skills, he discovered his perverted sister and her crazy antics again. The next day at school, Chu Qing heard a familiar voice near the entrance. It was his best friend, Lin Dong, running like a fragile woman. Oozing with femininity, Lin Dong wondered if something had happened to Chu Qing. Our protagonist quickly backed off and escaped since this world's Lin Dong was not his friend at all. Chu Qing can't stand the reversed world anymore. Just then, a female classmate named Song Chaoran checked to see if Chu Qing was feeling fine. Chu Qing claimed that he was just hungry. Song Chaoran shyly offered her food, but another classmate with a gorilla face stopped her. She pushed aside Song Chaoran and clung to Chu Qing. Chu Qing pushed the girl away and exuded killing intent. The girl tried to hurt Chu Qing as revenge, but someone intervened. 
A pretty boy named Ye Mao appeared and told the girl to stay away from him. He then asked Chu Ching for a conversation. He apologized for what happened the other day with his sister. In a flashback, he had his sister, Ye Chengxi, give Chu Ching a ride back home. During the ride, Ye Chengxi gave Chu Ching a drink that made him fall asleep. Ye Mao apologized upon realizing late about his sister's plans. Chu Ching told Ye Mao not to think much about it. After classes, Ye Chengxi appeared near the school gate to give Chu Ching a ride. Chu Ching couldn't believe that he was being stalked. Ye Chengxi then mentioned to Chu Ching his family's safety. In the end, Chu Ching complied, but he claimed that Ye Chengxi made a mistake by messing with his family. To scare her off, Chu Ching lightly tapped a car decoration and shattered it. He then moved over on top of Ye Chengxi, reminding her about the consequences. Ye Chengxi corrected herself and mentioned that she could help Chu Ching's family business get back on its feet. Chu Ching wondered if Ye Chengxi was acting sympathetic, but Ye Chengxi only wanted to pursue Chu Ching's heart. Chu Ching agreed to start off as friends and reminded Ye Chengxi not to annoy him. While driving, Ye Chengxi asked if Chu Ching practiced old martial arts. Chu Ching debunked that idea, saying men were considered weak. Ye Chengxi figured that out since she already did a background check on Chu Ching's family history, free of martial artists. Chu Ching then stared at her. Just then, I noticed a truck, but it was too late. Their car crashed and was thrown off the road. Ye Chengxi opened her eyes and discovered an injured Chu Ching protecting her. She got worried, but Chu Ching grabbed her and busted the door open. The two came out of the car, and Ye Chengxi suggested going to the hospital. However, Chu Ching claimed that it was not over. A group of women came out of the truck. Ye Chengxi confronted them since they hurt her man. She fought the woman all alone. One slipped away and ran toward Chu Ching. Chu Ching used a bit of energy and knocked out the attacker. He then saw Ye Chengxi being outnumbered, and with a weapon in his hand, he joined the fight. Chu Ching surprised everyone as he slashed multiple attackers. Ye Chengxi then struck the remaining ones and knocked them out. Ye Chengxi commended Chu Ching, but it was nothing for him. Ye Chengxi then planned to investigate the matter. She then asked Chu Ching for dinner, but Chu Ching claimed that his father would get worried. Ye Chengxi got a call and shouted in disbelief. Chu Ching wondered if it was about the Ye family, but he didn't care at all. Just then, Ye Chengxi grabbed Chu Ching and asked her not to go since her mother was also attacked in the same way as them. Chu Ching realized that this was not a simple coincidence. Ye Chengxi was worried that her mom might die, and that her aunt could kick her out of the Ye family. Chu Ching tried to calm her down, and Ye Chengxi felt assured by Chu Ching's words. She then hugged him tightly, and the two soon arrived at the Ye family's residence. When they got there, they found the entrance blocked by guards per Ye Chengxi's aunt's orders. Chu Ching said he was a doctor checking on Ye Chengxi's mom, but they doubted him because he was a man claiming to be a doctor. Luckily, Chu Ching had learned medicine in the fairy world. He looked at the security guards and accurately diagnosed their health issues, shocking everyone. They finally let him in. However, Ye Chengxi's aunt, Ye Mei, and her daughter, Ye Meier, stopped them. Ye Chengxi wondered where her mom was. Ye Mei called Ye Chengxi rude and couldn't believe she brought a man home since they were banned from their family. She told Chu Ching he had to prove himself before he could enter the Ye family. Ye Mei asked her daughter, Ye Meier, to test Chu Ching's skills. Ye Mei set up this plan to frame Chen Chi by making it seem like he had done something wrong. Her goal was to get Ye Chengxi to help Chu Ching while Ye Meier hurt him, breaking the rules of the Ye family. Ye Meier's condition was that if she won a fight against Chu Ching, he would have to spend the night with her. Even though Ye Chengxi objected, Chu Ching agreed and told them to start the fight. Ye Meier attacked first, but Chu Ching dodged and knocked her out with one hit. This surprised Ye Mei, who started complaining. After that, Chu Ching and Ye Chenxi went inside to meet Ye Chenxi's mom. In her room, Ye Chenxi's mom, not sure if he could really help, asked him to leave them alone for a while. With a quick glance, he figured out her condition. This made Ye Chenxi's mom ask everyone else to leave the room so she could talk to him alone. She thought Chu Ching was from the Li family and questioned his intentions towards Ye Chenxi. But he said he's just a friend of Ye Chenxi, not from the Li family. She believed him and showed him her wound. Chu Ching was surprised to see the wound had gotten worse. He explained that although she could manage it for now, it would harm her organs in five days. He placed his hand over the wound and started absorbing it, but his current abilities didn't let him absorb all of it. Cheng Shi's mother felt relieved seeing him try and thanked him for helping. While he was on his way home, he noticed the wound on his palm that he had absorbed. Unfortunately, he couldn't get rid of it given his current abilities. He remembered an elixir from the fairy world that worked for injuries like this but he wasn't sure if it existed in this world. The next day at school he saw Tang Xian playing basketball, with all the boys watching her admirably. 
Back in his original world, Tang Xian had been his crush during prep school, but she didn't recognize him here. Surprisingly, she walked over to him and challenged him to a basketball game. He agreed and took the ball from her. She proposed a bet. If she won, he would be her boyfriend, and if he won, she would do whatever he asked. The game started, she quickly scored her first point, leaving Chu Ching shocked. She got hold of the ball once more and tried scoring another point, but he blocked her shot and took control of the ball. He then said it was his turn and made an impressive jump to score a point from quite a distance. This secured his win. Feeling victorious, he mustered the courage to ask her out on a date. Her response was a playful challenge. She told him to get stronger first if he wanted that date. Later, back at the Ye family mansion, Chen Shi wanted to know how to thank Chu Ching for saving her and her mom. Chu Ching grinned and asked for some time to think, coming up with some amusing ideas. Unbeknownst to her, helping Cheng Shi's mom had actually boosted his progress in cultivating his pure aura and spiritual strength. He had a strong determination to fully heal Chen Shi's mom the next time around, in order to completely awaken his spiritual body. While he was walking home, Li Yue came across him and warned him to steer clear of Tang Xian. However, Chu Qing paid no attention to the threats. This made Li Yue angry, and he tried to physically confront Chu Qing. But Chu Qing skillfully avoided the confrontation, defeating both him and his female bodyguards. Chu Qing couldn't understand why Tang Xian wanted to marry someone as unintelligent as Li Yue. This made him think about investigating the situation. He remembered Chen Qi's offer of a reward and decided to ask her for a private investigator. Chu Qing waited at the bar for the private investigator to arrive. A young woman named Chen Hua Hua came up to him and introduced herself as the investigator. He was surprised because she looked too young for the job. Chen Hua Hua asked about his relationship with Chen Shi and even flirted with him, jokingly asking him to be her boyfriend. This made Chu Qing feel awkward, so he quickly shifted to the main reason he was there. He asked her about Tang Xian's family. Chen Hua Hua told him that Tang's family was a big deal in the city, owning most of the major businesses. But recently, they had run into some problems, and their finances were not stable. To help them out, the Li family proposed a marriage between Li Yue and Tang Xian. This surprised Chu Qing because Tang Xian had never mentioned any of this before. Curious, Chu Qing also asked Chen Hua Hua about alchemy and whether alchemic families existed in this world. To his surprise, she said that the Tang family was one of those alchemic families, known for making elixirs and medicines. He was intrigued and wanted to know more. She explained to him about the two main types of alchemy known to people. Common alchemy, which involved using inner power to make elixirs, and another type that used spiritual energy. She mentioned that the second type was beyond her expertise. This made him wonder if there were others like him in this world. Wanting to know more, he tried to ask questions, but she made a playful deal. She'd share more info if he had dinner with her. Agreeing, he followed her to a small restaurant. He was surprised when she ordered pork skewers and beer, and he noticed other women ordering the same. It then hit him again that this world was the opposite of what he was used to. As the evening went on, Chen Hua Hua got more and more drunk. Seeing her state, he took her home and laid her gently on her bed. Just as he was about to leave, she grabbed his hand and asked him to stay. After getting some sleep, Chu Qing picked up Chen Hua Hua's phone and started looking for more information. He opened a document about confidential transactions and found out about an auction house where they sold rare items. He thought about something valuable she could auction to make a lot of money in this world. A few days later, Chu Qing practiced cultivation and got hold of a spiritual rock. These rocks were special because they helped with training and learning old martial arts. You could get them from specific sources like veins or by cultivating eternity. Since these rocks were really rare in this world, Chu Qing decided to auction the one he had. Chu Qing also went to Chen Shi's family place and healed her mother completely. In return, Chen Qi's mother promised to help him if he ever had any problems. On his way back home, Chu Qing realized he needed to focus on his cultivation to fully restore his spiritual body. Out of the blue, Chen Qi stopped him one day and kissed him as a way to thank him for helping her mom. She promised to give him an even better gift in the future. Back home, Chu Qing continued to work on his cultivation until he finally managed to revive his spiritual body. And in the process, he even summoned a sword. Out of nowhere, Chu Xiao burst into his room. He's undressed, so he hurriedly covered up and hid the sword. She said sorry and left, thinking her brother was doing something private. Chu Qing got dressed and went to the auction house to sell a spiritual rock. Jai Yu, who's in charge there, saw the rock and offered a lot of money on the spot. 
Back home, Chu Ching thought that if he built a big group of businesses with this money, he could eventually control the auction and the martial arts world. He gets a message from Chen Hua Hua, asking to meet for a drink. On his way there, someone suddenly attacks him. He grabs his sword and quickly attacks the person. The person begs for mercy, saying Li Yue sent them. But Chu Ching doesn't spare them and decides he's going to destroy the Li family. He keeps walking and then feels a strong heartbeat. He started feeling his body getting hotter, and his vision got blurry. He went over to Chen Hua Hua's house and began wondering why he had come there. Suddenly he felt a strong attraction, so he kissed Chen Hua Hua. He was surprised by his feelings and said sorry. But Chen Hua Hua told him to keep going, and they ended up being together that night. The next day Tang Xian looked for him in class. She asked him to have lunch but then she noticed a woman's scent on him. She didn't pay attention to it and told him to come along anyway. Others started wondering why a popular student like her would ask Tang Xian to have lunch together. While they were on their way, Tang Xian asked if they could hold hands, and he agreed. This made her blush. Tang Xian grew up being groomed as an heiress and always had to be careful about who she hung out with. But after meeting Chu Ching at the court, she had this strange feeling that he meant something important to her. She was already falling for him, feeling safe and relaxed whenever they were together. It was all so new to her, and she didn't understand why. At the cafeteria, Chu Ching ordered exactly what she loved to eat, which made Tang Xian wonder how he knew. While they were talking, he noticed two unfamiliar women entering. He got up from the table to get the food. Out of the blue, these two women took out daggers and tried to attack Tang Xian. Without wasting time, Chu Ching threw a plate of hot food at one of them, stopping their attack. He got stabbed by the other person, but he used his power to push her away. Then he fought with them and won. Tang Xian was surprised and asked if he came from a martial arts family, but he said no. He told her they should leave the cafeteria because it wasn't safe anymore. As they left, he started feeling weak from the stab wound. Tang Xian offered to take him to the hospital, but he said the wound wasn't serious and would heal on its own. Chu Ching was surprised that he could get hurt by the two average assassins, so he decided to make spirit artifacts for defense. Tang Xian said her family was known for making medicines, but their recipe was stolen a month ago. Other medicinal families joined forces to pressure them, possibly because of the Li family. He said he could help with her family's problem and suggested making a new formula for medicines. She explained that making formulas was tough. He told her that after the auction in two days, her family would notice him, and they could talk more then. Suddenly, he felt his heart thumping and realized the spirit energy he had put on Chen Chi was gone. He left Tang Xian behind and quickly called Chen Hua Hua to figure out where Chen Chi was. After that, he called up Jai Yu to get a ride. Jai Yu showed up without delay, and they began tailing the person Chen Hua Hua had pointed out. Jai Yu drove aggressively, and before long, they spotted a van carrying Chen Chi. Jai Yu forced the van to stop by ramming his car into it. Chu Ching got out of his car, took on all the people inside the van, and beat them in no time. As he tried to open the van's trunk, there was a sudden explosion that pushed him away. He was pretty surprised by the power and started wondering if there were spiritual cultivators in this world. Two men representing the Quan Zhen sect arrived and praised his skills. They invited him to join their sect but Chu Ching declined, criticizing their abilities. This provoked their anger, and one of them attacked with a salamander rod. Chu Ching countered with his sword, breaking the rod. Despite a fiery punch from his assailant, Chu Ching severed his hand. Seeing this, the other man grew furious, but before he could react, Chu Ching killed him. The last man attempted to use his powers but Chu Ching swiftly stabbed him. Chu Ching went over to the van to wake up Chen Shi. After spotting him she informed him that they needed to leave immediately to avoid the arrival of two senior Taoists. Chen Shi reassured her, saying that everything was alright. He then asked if she had any idea who might have kidnapped her. She suspected the Li family's involvement and mentioned that other smaller families had also been causing issues for her family. Chu Ching reasoned that this could be due to an upcoming auction where rare treasures were expected to show up. These families might have wanted to prevent their competitors from learning about it. Chen Shi invited Chu Ching to her house so her mother could thank him for rescuing her. He agreed, and when they reached Cheng Shi's place, they stumbled upon a secret meeting involving the Ye family. Cheng Shi's mom offered Chu Ching a seat, but one of the family members objected. He told them he wasn't there for the secret meeting. Instead, he showed them a spiritual stone and said he wanted to talk about business. He gave them the stone and asked them to check it. They didn't know its value, so they thought it was just a regular stone. But Chu Ching told Cheng Shi's mom to use her inner strength to feel its energy. When she did, she felt more energetic. She was surprised and asked how much he'd sell it for. 
he said it wouldn't be sold until an upcoming auction. He then offered them two talismans he had made, one for protection and another to boost their combat strength temporarily. They were shocked and asked why he was helping them. He said it was because Chen Shi was his friend. However, Chu Qing's real plan was to use the Ye family's help to establish his business in the city. Afterward, when he got home, he met his second aunt, Chu Qinghei. She wanted to talk about his arranged marriage. He told her he was still in college and wanted to delay marriage until after graduation. However, his aunt disagreed and began criticizing his family members. This made him angry, leading him to hit the table in frustration. His aunt got up to leave but reminded him about getting married soon before exiting. Feeling annoyed, he insulted her and went to his room. In his room, he called Chen Shi for a favor. After a while, Chu Qinghei, his aunt, enjoyed her time with some men at the bar. During this time, Chen Shi instructed someone to break her leg and remove a kidney. Meanwhile, that night, Chu Qing spent the whole night creating protective items for his friends and family. These items were meant to let him know right away if they were in danger. The next morning, he gave the protective pendants he had made to his father and sister. At school he fell asleep in class since he had stayed up all night working on the items. The teacher noticed he was asleep and told him to come solve a problem on the board. Even though he hadn't paid much attention in class, he remembered Song Chaoran, a classmate from his past life, teaching him. Using that memory, he managed to solve the problem correctly. This surprised everyone, including the teacher. Despite having slept through the lecture, Chu Qing's solution impressed the teacher so much that they made him the class representative. After class, Chu Qing rested his head on the desk to avoid others noticing as he created a new talisman. Suddenly, his best friend tapped him, and he paused swiftly. He handed the talisman to his friend for protection. His friend told him about the upcoming school sports events in two days and asked if he wanted to join. Chu Qing wasn't initially interested, but his friend managed to convince him eventually. After a bit, a girl named Ling Wanner came looking for Chu Qing. She was the school's popular figure, known for singing and playing the piano. She invited him to a party thrown by a middle school friend, mentioning that others from middle school would also love to see him there. After she left, Chu Qing went to meet Tang Ziyan in her classroom. He found her struggling with her homework, specifically a question he had previously solved in class. He kindly offered to help her and explained how to tackle the problem. Once he had assisted her, he suggested they step outside. Out there, he gave her one of the protective items he had made. Back inside the classroom, Chu Qing set himself a goal to create 30 more of these items before the school bell rang. He had promised to bring them to the Ye family. After some time, the school bell rang, signaling the end of the day. Chu Qing packed all the items he had crafted into his bag. As he was thinking about visiting Chen Shi later, a friend suddenly tapped him on the shoulder. The friend asked if he wanted to hang out with them that night. He said no, and went to Chen Shi's house. Chen Shi was really happy to see him again because she had been missing him. He also gave her the protective artifact. While she was wondering what it was used for, he threw a glass cup at her. But suddenly the talisman did something and made a barrier that stopped the cup from hitting her. She got really excited and kissed him. She wanted to sleep with him as a present, but he told her he had other things to do and would come back later. Then he left and went to Chen Hua Hua's house. Hua Hua was asleep, so he woke her up. When she saw him, she got excited and hugged him. After she had slept, Chu Qing found out that Hua Hua had gathered information about the ancient martial arts families in the city for him. While he was heading back, his dad called to know where he was, so his mom could pick him up. After a bit, his mom came, picked him up, and asked why he smelled like a woman's perfume. He didn't tell her the truth, and she advised him not to be alone with women. Shortly after, he got a notification that the Ye family had paid him 1.2 million yuan for the talismans he had given them. This got him thinking that if making artifacts could earn him that much, crafting elixirs could make him rich. When he got home, he visited Jai Yu, gave him a protective artifact, and Jai Yu thanked him mentioning it was the first time someone had treated him like a real friend. They both talked about their difficult pasts and drank until they got drunk. When Chu Qing got back home, he found his sister trying to sneak into the house because it was late. She saw him and got annoyed about his late return and the alcohol smell. Then she passed out, also drunk. So, Chu Qing helped her to her room. But when he tried to leave, his sister held him and pulled him onto the bed. She started mentioning some guy's name and tried to kiss him. In his drunken state, Chu Qing started to respond, but then he realized it was his sister and stopped himself. He quickly left the room and decided not to drink anymore. 
The next day, he went shopping for clothes for a reunion party. He also thought about getting a car so he wouldn't have to keep asking Jai Yu for rides. That's when he bumped into an old classmate, Zhou Bu Kun. Zhou Bu Chun let him know about the reunion party he was setting up. But Chu Ching told him Ling Wanner had already invited him two days earlier. Zhou Bu Kun was surprised that Ling Wanner asked him personally. He got a bit mad and left. Back when they were in middle school, Zhou Bu Kun used to bully Chu Ching and spread lies about him. Later, Chu Ching went to a car store to buy one. Some ladies saw him and thought a rich woman was looking after him. At night, he came to the party driving his new car. He saw Tang Ziyan and asked about Ling Wanner who had invited him. She said, It's not her concern. She also spilled the beans that Zhou Bu Kun had a bet with everyone that Chu Ching would show up in a school uniform. If he was wrong, he'd pay for everyone's meals for a week. Turns out, Zhou Bu Kun lost the bet and was pretty mad. Zhou Bu Kun told everyone about their Olympics preparation and his plan to create a male basketball team. He jokingly invited Chu Ching to join, trying to tease him. However, Chu Ching wasn't interested and declined. During the event, Chu Ching shared some dessert with Tang Xian, which made Zhou Bu Kun feel envious. Tang Xian, with affection, asked Chu Ching if he would consider joining the basketball team. He said he would do it if she gave him a kiss. Tang Xian suggested a French kiss instead, and this made people admire them and call them a couple. Later, Chu Ching invited everyone to have dessert at a nearby restaurant, and he paid for everyone. This shifted the attention from Zhou Bu Kun, who had organized the event, to Chu Ching, who became the center of attention. After a little while, Ling Wanner showed up, and Zhou Bu Kun was really happy to see her. He went over to welcome her, but she left him and went to meet Chu Ching instead. Zhou Bu Kun was asked to play the piano, and he invited Ling Wanner to dance while he played. Ling Wanner told everyone that the dance was for her best friend, Chu Ching. This made Tang Ziyan feel jealous because she thought Ling Wanner was dancing for Chu Ching. At the same time, Zhou Bu Kun got upset when he saw Chu Ching talking to Tang Ziyan while Ling Wanner was dancing for him. He got angry and confronted Chu Ching, but Chu Ching made fun of his music, which made Zhou Bu Kun even more furious. He got ready to fight and demanded an apology from Chu Ching. But instead, Chu Ching warned him that if he lost, he'd better say goodbye to his hands. This frightened him a lot. He began singing a strange song, The Kind Gods Sing, something he'd learned when he was becoming a god in his previous life. A mist appeared behind him, scaring Zhou Bu Kun. But Ling Wanner stepped in to stop Chu Ching. Tang Ziyan also told him to stop so he wouldn't get into trouble later on. The song's anger had such a strong effect on Chu Ching that he almost forgot he wasn't in heaven anymore. He took a kitchen knife and cut off Zhou Bu Kun's hair. He told Zhou Bu Kun that he wasn't the same person he had bullied before, and he warned him to never show up in front of him again. Zhou Bu Kun felt ashamed and left, and the party continued. After the party, Chu Ching realized he smelled like beer and thought it wouldn't be a good idea to go home to his parents that way. So, he called his sister and told her he couldn't come home. Instead, he decided to go to Hua Hua's house. When he got there, he saw that her front door was open. He walked in and saw a man struggling with Hua Hua. He tried to help her, but then he recognized that the man was her dad. Hua Hua's dad said she owed him money, but she said he had used the money for gambling instead. He insisted it was his right to get the money back from her. Getting frustrated, Hua Hua threw her debit card at her dad, but he said he would get the money from her boyfriend. Hua Hua defended Chu Ching by saying he was just a student with no money. Her dad then grabbed her and even suggested she should sell herself to rich boyfriends to get the money. Chu Ching told him that he'd pay the requested amount, but on the condition that he sign a paper. This paper meant he'd have to end their father-daughter relationship and promise to never bother her again. At first he said no, but Chu Ching said she'd cancel the offer if he didn't agree. Faced with this, he eventually said yes. Once he signed, Chu Ching used magic to turn a mug into a weapon. She warned him about what could happen if he bothered Hua Hua again and actually hurt him with the mug. After that, he kissed Hua Hua and they spent the night together. The next morning, Hua Hua woke up Chu Ching to share some good news with him. She had made a nice breakfast for him. He was curious why she was treating him so special. She told him she didn't want to lose him. He reassured her and said she should just be herself. A bit later, he got a message from Jai Yu, saying he had sent the money he asked for. It was the same amount he planned to give to Hua Hua's father. Then, a message came from Tang Ziyan, asking him to come to the basketball club after school. At the basketball club, Tang Ziyan asked him about the new potion formula he had mentioned. He gave her a paper with the formula he thought could help mages upgrade their magic. She joked about running away with it and asked if he trusted her. 
He said he cared more about helping her family than the money. She confessed she had fallen for him, and they kissed. Later that night, while he was studying at home, his mother came to talk. She asked if he liked any girl. His mom told him it was okay if he married the girl he loved, but her family disagreed. She couldn't help him much. She said he had to join the National University if he wanted to marry his choice and avoid the arranged marriage. After a while, Chu Ching started practicing and summoned his sword. He saw the sword was different with rust on it. If the rust didn't go away, bad things would happen. He thought he might have taken the wrong path during practice. He urgently needed to find a sheath for the sword to save himself. Then, he got a call from Zayu. Mad that Chu Ching misset an auction? Chu Ching had forgotten about it due to a nap. He rushed to the auction to find something for his sword. At the auction, he had challenged her, which had made her angry. When she tried to hit him, he grabbed her hand and caused her pain. Zai Yu had seen everything and stood up for Chu Ching. He also kicked out the ladies who had mocked him from the auction house. Zai Yu had also told him about stopping someone from the Chu family in the imperial capital. This person had come to buy information about his second aunt, Chu Ching Hei, who had lost a leg and a kidney. Chu Ching had acted like he didn't know anything about what happened to his aunt. Chen Shi and her mom had shown up at the auction house later. Chen Shi was really happy to see Chu Ching again. They all went to a room, and Chu Ching checked the list of items for auction. And guess what? The spiritual stone he had mentioned to Jai Yu was actually up for auction. He got Chen Shi a drink, and while doing that, she pulled him closer. She seduced him, and they soon began making out. Just then, Jai Yu walked in on them. He said sorry for interrupting and left in a hurry. Chen Shi tried to continue, but Chu Ching suggested they stop for now due to his unease with Jai Yu around. However, Jai Yu hadn't actually left, he was just behind the door. Chu Ching called him back in and he brought information about the auction items. Unfortunately, Chu Ching couldn't find the special spiritual golden material needed to free his sword among the items. Jai Yu took the information and showed it to Chen Shi, implying that Chu Ching's expectations were too high. Chen Shi noticed a particular item, and as she looked at it closely, Chu Ching zoomed in and realized that it was made of the same material he was looking for. All of a sudden he hears Tang Xian's voice coming from the auction room. She's bidding a huge amount for something. He's curious about why she's bidding so much and decides to figure out what's being auctioned. Turns out it's the Tang family formula. He wonders who would auction it. So, he goes to find out more, while Chu Ching heads back to meet Chen Shi. He asks Cheng Xi why she's only interested in having fun with guys and not in her family's matters. He wants to know how she plans to solve family problems if she doesn't care about them. After a bit, Zhai Yu comes back with information about how much they made from selling spiritual stones, Chu Ching then asks Jai Yu about the buyer of something called Qiong Jiang, an item that's made of the same material he's looking for. Jai Yu says he can't say who the buyer is due to the rules. But Chu Ching clarifies that he's only interested in the container itself, not what was inside it. This surprises Jai Yu, making him wonder if this container is also something valuable that he underestimated. Chu Ching left Jai Yu and headed home. On the way, he noticed a road sign indicating ongoing construction ahead. Surprisingly, there were no cars around, which puzzled him since he hadn't seen any construction during his trip to the auction earlier. Out of nowhere, lightning struck, accompanied by a strong aura that shook him. Reacting quickly, he steered his car into a nearby bush for safety. Getting out of his car, he tried to figure out what was going on. In the scene unfolding before him, he saw a woman in a purple robe, an officer from the Jianwu department, approaching another woman and her group. Remembering Chen Shi's explanation about the Jianwu department, Chu Ching recalled it was formed because the regular police couldn't handle the ancient martial artist groups. The officer was there to take an auction item from the woman, claiming it as her country's property. The woman asked for a judgment order, which was necessary for the Jianwu department's action. As the officer seemingly reached for the order, she suddenly attacked with a punch. In an instant, she took down all of them and went to grab the auction item. Chu Ching realized it was Chong Jiang, the same item he wanted. Just then, the lady noticed someone spying on her and asked them to show themselves. He came out, and she attacked right away. He blocked her attack and summoned his sword and even though she kicked him in the face it didn't faze him. He countered with a powerful punch, sending her flying. She pulled out a gun, with its aura menacing, and shot at him. She thought he was done for, so she took the item and started to leave. But out of nowhere Chu Ching stabbed her from behind, and she died. The bullet's aura had hurt him badly so he started cultivating immediately to heal his wounds. He cried out in pain as he did so. Chu Chin realized that whenever he tried to close his wounds, they would reopen and get worse. He couldn't figure out why until he inspected the gun that had shot him. 
Despite looking like a normal gun, he soon found out that the dangerous energy was stored in the bullet itself. Acting on this discovery, he went straight to Hua Hua's house. When Hua Hua saw him, she was surprised and helped him onto the bed. Chu Ching asked her to cut out the bad part of his wound, but she was too scared to do it. Instead, she called Chen Qi for help. When Cheng Shi arrived, she did what needed to be done and tied up his wounds. The next morning, Chu Ching felt much better. Then, Cheng Shi confronted him about meeting up with Hua Hua behind her back. Chu Ching defended himself, saying that if women could have multiple men, he should be able to have multiple women too. She asked him what had happened, and he explained that he had killed a messenger from Jian Wu who had tried to assassinate him. This revelation shocked Chen Shi and Hua Hua. Chen Shi examined the bullet and identified it as Wang Chuan's. She wondered how he had survived and asked about the messenger's rank. He admitted not knowing the rank but remembered the messenger wearing a purple robe. Chen Shi informed him that a purple robe indicated the lowest rank in the Jianwu department and questioned why Wang Chuan's bullet was associated with it. Later Chu Qing's phone rang and he considered leaving for school to avoid talking with his dad. Chen Shi and Hua Hua encouraged him to rest and recover from his wounds instead. He reassured them that his wounds had already healed completely. Chen Shi was surprised by how fast he had recovered from Wang Chuan's injuries. She asked him how he had stopped the spread of Wang Chuan's aura in his body. He explained it was a simple technique and offered to teach her if she was interested. She was excited, but he had to leave for school and departed. As he left, Hua Hua tried to talk to Chen Shi, but she didn't respond and left as well. Back in school, Chu Qing used to doze off during class while the teacher was teaching. Song Charan would try to wake him up, which annoyed the teacher. She'd slam her hand on the table and scold Song Charan for disturbing the class. She even threatened to call Chu Qing's parents. Song Charan would plead with the teacher, and Chu Qing joined in. They promised not to cause a disturbance while sleeping in the future, making the whole class laugh. The teacher warned that if Song Charan didn't make it to the top 10 in the exam, she'd involve his parents. Chu Qing surprised everyone by offering to take the exam for Song Charan. The teacher warned that if he failed, she'd expose their actions during assembly, embarrassing them. Chu Qing realized Song Chaoren had a crush on him. A student told Tang Xian that Chu Qing was cheating on Song Chaoren. Tang Xian and her friends confronted Song Chaoren but found Chu Qing with his head on the table. Misinterpreting the situation, she assumed he was in tears. She went to meet him but found out he was just sleeping. Song Chaoren said sorry to Chu Qing for causing him trouble, but he told her not to blame herself since he was the one who dozed off in class. He gave her a hug and reassured her that they would always be friends. Tang Xian and Chu Qing then went to the cafeteria for lunch. Tang Xian's friend Tao Yun Yao scolded Chu Qing and told him to apologize to Tang Xian for hugging another girl in front of her. Chu Qing argued that she should apologize too as many guys were pursuing her. Chu Qing told Tao Yun Yao that he didn't need Tang Xian's protection and should instead be protecting her. Tao Yun Yao burst into laughter and Tang Xian joked that he'd need to become stronger than her to do that. Tao Yun Yao cautioned him to stay away from other women, but he pulled her closer and flirted. After a while, Tang Xian informed Chu Qing that the formula he had given her had been tested and wasn't for improving martial arts skills. It was actually a poison recipe. Chu Qing was shocked. However, Tang Xian told him that the poison still held value and offered 200 million for it. This surprised Chu Qing, making him think he could be rich by selling his formulas. He mentioned wanting to buy herbs from her family to make more elixirs for Chen Shi's mom. Tang Xian was taken aback that he wanted to make elixirs since no man in the country was skilled at it. She said she looked forward to it because it was him. Then, she playfully licked some food remnants off Chu Qing, leaving him wondering. She explained most men would be embarrassed, advising him to stop martial arts training. She promised to protect him if he needed defense. Concerned for his health, she gave him healing medicine and joked about not wanting an impotent husband, Chu Qing got home, and his dad scolded him for not coming home the previous night. Chen Shi appeared, making excuses for him. Chu Qing was surprised, and asked why she came. She gave him Tang family healing medicine, not knowing he already had one from Tang Xian. He went ahead and collected it anyways, and started teaching her how to handle Wang Chuan. They entered Chu Qing's room and started the cultivation process. After a while, Chen Shi started coughing and feeling pain. Without delay, he gave her the healing medicine, only to find out that his Reiki was causing damage along her body's pathways. He then realized that when he had healed Aunt Ye, his Reiki had passed through her body instead of her meridian. He acted quickly, directing his Reiki through her body which relieved her pain. This helped him understand why Tang Ziyan had called the formula a poison. He deduced that the main difference between men and women in this world was the irregularity of their meridians. This led him to conclude that he needed an ancient martial arts book 
Suddenly, Chen Shi tried to seduce him by leaning in, but their moment was interrupted by Chu Qing's father entering the room. Surprised to find them on the bed when they had claimed to be studying, Chen Shi said his goodbyes and left in a hurry. Chu Qing then reassured her father that there was nothing romantic between them. Left alone, Chen Shi thought about using the Cheong Jiang technique to craft his sword's sheath. Meanwhile, two women from the Jianwu department visited the spot where their colleague had been killed to investigate the murderer. One of them, dressed in a green robe, mentioned that her family had arranged for her to marry someone from the Chu family. She was on her way to Jinmen to meet this prospective partner. Chu Qing practiced cultivation diligently. He crafted a sheath for his sword and made a mask to hide his face during missions. He was puzzled by the fights over Cheng Zhang. Chen Shi messaged him, inviting him over for dinner with her mom. At the Ye Mansion, Aunt Ye asked about his elixir progress. He said it would be ready next week. She offered to pay, but he asked to see the Ye family's cultivation techniques instead. Aunt Ye refused, saying only family members by marriage could access the book. Chu Qing disagreed, saying he would choose who joins his family. Aunt Ye warned him about the risks of ancient martial arts and suggested he quit. Curious why men couldn't learn martial arts, he planned to ask Jai Yu. At Jai Yu's place, he learned that men had to be castrated to cultivate. Chu Qing was surprised by the news. When Jai Yu offered to help him find a hospital for his castration, he said no. He then asked where he could buy old self-defense techniques, but Jai Yu told him it was impossible. Families who knew these techniques guarded them and didn't share. Chu Qing realized that learning ancient martial arts in this world wouldn't be easy. Later, he got a message from Hua Hua saying some packages had arrived from the Tang family. He went to her house and worked alone to make pills. He successfully made the Quan Yi Dan, a pill that could make a person stronger by 30% for a little while. Hua Hua watched out of curiosity as he worked, finding it hard to believe he could make pills since only special alchemist families could do that. Eventually, they started making out, despite Hua Hua being on her period. The day after, while at school, Chu Qing felt tired because he hadn't slept well the night before. Yamao, who is Chen Shi's brother, met him and said that his sister wanted to meet him. Chu Qing followed Yamao, and when they found Chen Shi, she offered him a drink. Chu Qing drank it right away, but soon started feeling dizzy, realizing Chen Shi had drugged him again. She took him to a hotel room and tried to get intimate with him. After they slept together, she gave him the book he had asked for. The Ancient Martial Arts Manual of the Yi Family. She then told him that he'd have to be her future husband if he wanted to open the book. He agreed happily. With excitement, he pulled her close and kissed her, passing something into her mouth. Chen Shi was curious about it and he assured her she'd understand soon. While Chu Qing read through the book, Chen Shi began her training. He found out that in this world, women could absorb spiritual power through meridians, while men couldn't without risking harm. He figured out a way to adapt the martial arts techniques so that men could practice them safely. Chen Shi told him she had made progress, and he revealed he had given her Qing Yi, the special wine from Cheong Jiang, to help her. She tested her strength against his and realized he was still stronger. They soon began making out again. The next day, when Chu Qing arrives at school, Tao Yun Yao approaches him and informs him that Tang Xian wants to talk with him. He meets with Tang Xian, who immediately confronts him, asking where he was the previous night and what he was up to. He explains that he spent the night with Chen Shi at a hotel. Tang Xian becomes extremely angry and accuses him of being shameless. In response, Chu Qing questions whether he's the only person she plans to be with as her future husband. Tang Xian explains that her family doesn't permit such a relationship, and Chu Qing asserts his right to see other girls as well. He makes it clear that if she can't accept him this way, they might need to go their separate ways. Tang Xian admits that what he did angered her and mentions her desire to harm Chen Shi, However, out of concern for Chu Qing's feelings, she suggests an arm wrestling competition instead. If he loses, she will consider harming Chen Shi. Chu Qing agrees, but soon discovers that Tang Xian is surprisingly strong. When he discovered that Tang Xian would outmatch him, he took a pill to boost his abilities and managed to defeat her. Tang Xian was surprised and couldn't figure out how he could beat her. Chu Qing reminded her of a promise she had made, and she reluctantly agreed to let this slide, with a warning that she wouldn't forgive him if he cheated on her again. Chu Qing returned home and was surprised to find a stranger in his house. The lady introduced herself as Gong Yue, claiming to be his fiancé. He insisted he didn't have a fiancé, but she showed him a marriage contract signed by his aunt and grandmother. Furious, he tore up the document and felt an urge to confront her. Chu Qing told his parents he was going out for dinner, and Gong Yue decided to join him so they could get to know each other better. On their way out, Chu Qing attempted to attack her, but she skillfully evaded his strikes. When he tried another attack, she resisted him once again. 
Chu Ching felt the pain from their clashes and realized that Gong Yue was even stronger than Tang Ziyan. Fearing he might get hurt if the fight continued, he decided to summon his sword. She used to calm him down and tell him he was eligible to be her husband, considering his strength. However, he would tell her he didn't want to be her husband and wouldn't marry anyone. She would warn him about the potential consequences, but he remained adamant, mentioning his ambition to enter the National University. She would mock him, saying it had been a long time since any man had succeeded in getting into the National University. Two days later, while other students were busy with sports, Chu Ching would diligently study to secure admission to the National University and prove a point to Gong Yue. Xiao Wu approached him and mentioned a game he had later in the day. Chu Ching declined, stating he had no time for such distractions. In frustration, Xiao Wu grabbed the book Chu Ching was reading and threw it away. This infuriated Chu Ching, leading him to react by hitting Xiao Wu with a book. He then instructed Xiao Wu to retrieve his book. Xiao Wu attempted to strike Chu Ching, but Chu Ching managed to evade his attack. Xiao Wu made another attempt to assault him, but Ye Mao intervened, preventing the attack. In response, Xiao Wu bit Ye Mao's hand. This prompted Chu Ching to seize Xiao Wu and put pressure on him, demanding an apology. Xiao Wu insincerely apologized, and upon spotting Tao Yun Yao, he feigned being the victim of the situation. Chu Ching informed Tao Yun Yao that Xiao Wu had unexpectedly attacked Ye Mao and even bitten him. He explained that he was trying to stop Xiao Wu from continuing his aggressive behavior. Tao Yun Yao then left and reported the incident to Tang Xian. Tao Yun Yao began advising Tang Xian to end her relationship with Chu Ching, as she believed he wasn't the right match for her. However, this suggestion made Tang Xian very angry. She started defending Chu Ching, and in response, Tao Yun Yao warned her that she was losing herself. Meanwhile, Zhuo Bukun followed Xiao Wu to confront Chu Ching at the infirmary while he was taking care of Ye Mao. Zhuo Bukun told Chu Ching to apologize, but Chu Ching, instead of apologizing, dropped a bunch of keys and challenged Zhuo Bukun to pick them up if he wanted an apology. Zhuo Bukun, however, didn't pay much attention to this and informed Chu Ching that Xian had invited him to a basketball match. Chu Ching initially disagreed, but eventually agreed to attend the game. At the basketball court, Chu Ching noticed a large crowd of people, speculating that the girls enjoyed watching the boys play basketball. Chang Saif showed Chu Ching two seats that were reserved for him and Ye Mao, as they waited to join the game. Chu Ching realized that one of the seats had glue on it, a prank intended to get back at him. In a clever move, he pretended to sit in the sticky seat but chose the other one, much to Zhang Sifi's disappointment. Tang Xian approached Chu Ching and handed him a note with a message, asking how it felt to sit on the sidelines. He took the note and replied, suggesting she shouldn't have taken the seat beside him. Unfortunately, it was too late. She had already sat down. When she tried to stand up, the glue on the seat tore her trousers, revealing her underwear. She shouted at Chu Ching for not telling her in time. She took off her top, tied it around her waist and tried to attract him. Chu Ching quickly took off his top and covered her saying he didn't want others to see her body. She took it off anyway and went back to sit next to Li Huanger, who was the president of Jing Men Second High School. The game began and Chu Ching praised his team but noticed something strange about the other team. Li Huanger asked Tang Xian if Chu Ching was her boyfriend and proposed a deal. If her team won, Tang Xian would have to let him be with her for a month. If not, she would have to run without her clothes. Tang Xian initially refused but eventually agreed to prove her team's superiority. Li Huanger told her team to reveal their true skills, and the game instantly changed. They had intentionally been playing poorly before. Chu Ching had doubts about the other team as he considered them. Tang Xian urged him to join the game, but he declined, saying he only intended to be a substitute. Tang Xian emphasized the urgency of the situation, and he agreed to play only if Zhou Bukun cheered for him. With her support, he joined the game and made the team perform better. He bravely charged towards the opposing team, approached the basket, and scored a point for their side. As the game continued, he surprised everyone by intentionally passing the ball to one of his opponents instead of his own teammates. This unexpected move left everyone in shock, wondering what he was up to. The opponent dribbled down the court towards the basket, and that's when Chu Ching did something surprising, he lowered the opponent's shorts revealing that she was, in fact, a woman and not a man. The other team got disqualified, and Chu Ching's team emerged as the winner. After three days, Chu Ching was in a class learning about male anatomy, trying to figure out how to help men practice ancient martial arts. Ye Mao informed him that Tang Xian wanted to meet him at the Ting Yu Martial Arts Stadium the following day. Chu Ching was curious about why she wanted to meet at the training grounds. The next day at the stadium, Chu Ching met Tang Xian, and she unexpectedly challenged him to a fight. He questioned the reason behind their fight, but she insisted on revealing it only if he lost. Surprisingly, he won the fight. 
Tang Xian was amazed that he could defeat her and asked if he was still practicing martial arts against her advice. Chu Qing reassured her not to worry and promised she wouldn't become a widow. Eventually, they started a romantic relationship. Tang Yu arrived at the stadium with Zhuo Bukun and his friends. Xian introduced Chu Qing as her boyfriend and introduced Ting Yu as her nanny. Chu Qing was surprised and wondered how Ting Yu could have taken care of Xian when she was young, given that he was a man. Ting Yu showed Chu Qing the guys he had brought with him. Xian then punished the guys for not supporting Chu Qing and for putting glue on his seat. While this was happening, Ting Yu asked Chu Qing to come with him to help carry some medicines. Chu Qing agreed to go along, mainly out of respect for Xian. When they reached their destination, Ting Yu started asking Chu Qing questions about his family and their occupation in a somewhat spiteful manner. Chu Qing responded rudely, which made Ting Yu angry. In his anger, Ting Yu raised his hand and slapped Chu Qing. Chu Qing became angry and kicked him, sending him flying. Tang Xian was shocked and rushed to Chu Qing to ask what had happened. He explained that Ting Yu had told him he didn't deserve her and should stay away. Ting Yu also said Chu Qing would never become the ruler of the Tang family. Chu Qing responded by saying he wouldn't marry anyone, even if Xian begged him. He warned Ting Yu that anyone who slapped him would face dire consequences, but he spared him this time because of Tang Xian. Ting Yu continued to speak arrogantly, and Chu Qing attempted to attack him with his sword, but Ting Yu managed to dodge it, leaving him terrified. Meanwhile, at the Jianwu department, they held a meeting to discuss their colleague's death. One member informed Gong Yue that they hadn't found any suspicious characters, but they had discovered something interesting. She then revealed a valuable item, explaining that it was the latest item from the Shizhen auction. Gong Yue grew suspicious and asked her to find someone who had recently been close to Zhai Yu. Gong Yue visited Chu Qing's house but didn't find him. Instead, she noticed something on his table. Tang Xian had been angry with Chu Qing. He chased after her, apologizing for what he had done to her nanny. She told him he was strong, thinking he might even be better than herself. Later, she confided that his earlier words about not wanting to marry her, even if she knelt and begged, had hurt her deeply. Chu Qing reassured her that they would always be together, and then he gently kissed her. After the kiss, he spotted a woman perched on the roof of a nearby building, patiently waiting for him. He analyzed her and soon realized that she was even stronger than he was. He told Xian that she was an old friend and suggested she head home while he talked to her. At first Xian said no, but eventually she agreed and began running home. Then, the lady launched an attack. He turned and started running too. The lady chased him, but suddenly changed direction and went after Xian instead. He saw this and quickly turned to save Xian. Right as the lady was about to catch Xian, Chu Qing suddenly appeared before her. She lifted him by the neck and asked him about the martial arts move he had just used. He offered to do anything if she let him go, but she carried him to a different place instead. Gong Yue showed up in a green robe with the Wang Chuan bullets as they talked. Gong Yue told the lady to leave him to her, but the lady didn't think she was capable enough. Gong Yue grew angry, and they both confronted each other. Chu Qing thought that escaping was impossible, so he used the chance to stab the lady with a sword, ending her life. Chu Qing was shocked when he realized the lady in the green robe was Gong Yue herself. Gong Yue learned that she had been in the company of the lady in the purple robe's murderer. She questioned why he had murdered her. Chu Qing explained that she possessed a valuable item and had harmed many people. In response, Gong Yue threatened to shoot him, but he warned her that she would lose her fiancé if she pulled the trigger. She then suggested finding a room to have a private conversation. Inside the room, she showed him a drawing of a male body she had found in his room and asked him where he obtained it. He confessed that he had drawn it himself, surprising her. She inquired if he could create a training program. She retracted her earlier statement about him not being able to enter the National University and proposed a deal. She would help him with Xu Zheng's business, while he would assist in her recovery. Puzzled by her behavior, he observed her, and pointed out that her training methods contradicted her physical condition, causing her to gain weight. Gong Yue was thrilled that he could help her get back in shape, and began sharing information about both the Chu and Gong families. Chu Qing had a moment of realization that Mr. Chu's family needed to strengthen their position. Consequently, they suggested that he should marry into the Gong family. Chu Qing expressed their desire for the Wang Chuan bullets, but this request was denied, as it wasn't part of their agreement. In response, Chu Qing revealed the Kuang Yi pill, a special pill that boosted a person's strength by 30% when consumed. The lady was quite pleased with its effects and inquired about obtaining more in exchange for the Wang Chuan bullet. Eventually, Chu Qing offered comfort by gently patting her head, making her feel better. She asked him for help in creating training methods that would suit her physique. He explained that it wasn't an easy task, as her spiritual foundation and other crucial elements had been absent for a long time. She was astonished by his knowledge. 
Chu Ching disclosed that her own family had taken those elements from her. This revelation made her furious, causing her to point a gun at him. But Chu Ching insisted that she needed to continue her training to seek revenge. Her anger escalated, leading her to fire at him. But he managed to evade the shot. Unfortunately, she ended up with a bleeding head wound. The realization of her family's betrayal left her feeling defeated. Chu Ching assured her he would do his utmost to assist her when he reached the Imperial capital. He advised her to take a break from practicing, to prevent any harm to herself. Meanwhile, Xian, accompanied by her second aunt, embarked on a quest to find Chu Ching. She received a call from him, reassuring her that he was safe. Upon returning home, Chu Ching informed his parents that Gong Yue wouldn't be joining them for dinner. She was on a flight back to the capital and had decided to call off the marriage. As Gong Yue was on the plane, someone handed her a document listing people who had recently interacted with Jai Yu. As she perused the list, she was surprised to find Chu Ching's name among them. This left her with a sense that their fates were intertwined. Chu Ching went to his sister's room to check if her bed had been damaged since Gong Yue had been using it for a few days. He noticed a deep hole in the bed and decided to call his sister to discuss it. When he called, Xiao Tao, his sister's boyfriend, answered the phone. Instead of revealing his identity, Chu Ching decided to play a prank on Xiao Tao by pretending to be his sister's boyfriend. This made Xiao Tao quite upset, and he had a hard time believing it was Chu Ching on the line. However, Chu Ching eventually disclosed his real identity as his sister's younger brother, which eased the situation. At school, Chu Ching had a conversation with Zhou Bukun and his friends, who already looked up to him as a leader. He told them about his desire for them to practice ancient martial arts, which made them anxious due to the reputation of these arts being dangerous for men. Chu Ching assured them that his training methods were different from the usual ones and had been designed to be safe for men. He even mentioned needing someone to test the strength of an iron object, but assured them that it was completely safe. As Chu Ching was speaking with Chen Shi, someone from the Tang family approached him and informed him that their boss was looking for him. He made his way to the car and found Xian's mother and Ting Yu waiting inside. He realized that Xian's mom was also unfriendly towards him, so he decided to leave since they had nothing more to discuss. Just as he was about to go, Xian arrived and asked why he was there. In a sudden move to tease her mother, he kissed Xian. She got into the car and drove off with her mom. Meanwhile, Chen Shi saw him kissing Xian. She pulled him into her car, and they were intimate there. After Chu Ching said his goodbyes and left, he got a strange call from his sister, asking him to take care of their parents. A woman took the phone and urgently told him to come to her within 30 minutes, or else his sister would be in danger. Chu Ching called Jai Yu to inquire about the group that had taken his sister. Jai Yu warned him that the group was exceptionally powerful and that he might not be able to rescue his sister if he had provoked them. Despite the warning, Chu Ching decided to proceed because he couldn't leave his sister in their clutches. Upon arriving at the location, he witnessed a woman mistreating his sister, which fueled his determination. He rushed towards the woman just as their boss appeared. Chai Xiao, his sister, urged him to escape, but he decided to put her to sleep temporarily so he could confront the boss. Chu Ching demanded an explanation for what they had done to his sister and swore vengeance against anyone involved. The confrontation quickly escalated into combat, and Chu Ching realized that his opponent possessed remarkable speed and strength. To level the playing field, he consumed one of his strength-enhancing pills and promptly summoned his sword. However, the boss had been exerting control over him, so he decided to approach the situation differently, fearing for his life. He questioned her about the truth, and she revealed that his sister had a forbidden affair with the mayor's son, leading the mayor to order her execution. He pleaded for his sister's release and she pointed to a scar on her face, an outcome of his sister's actions. She demanded money, but he offered a sacred gem instead. She insisted that he spend the night with her, and they soon retired to a room. After an intimate encounter, she surprised him with a syringe and requested another round. Chu Tung declined and left. He carried his sister back home. Upon arriving, he encountered their father who scolded him for returning home late. Chu Ching explained to his dad that his sister had been kidnapped and he had been called to the police station to pick her up. This news frightened his father, who was concerned about recent troubles involving their family, as well as issues related to his mother's company. Chu Ching was surprised to learn about the problem with his mom's company, but his father didn't provide details when he asked. Chu Ching called Chen Shi and found out that the issue was somehow connected to Tang Xian's mother. The following day, he visited his mother's company for the first time. A woman guided him to the general manager's office. During their journey, the lady tried to flirt with him. Suddenly, they came across President Chu, who was Chu Ching's mom. She was taken aback to see him there and asked what he was doing at the company. 
The lady apologized for bringing a stranger into the company and falsely claimed that Chu Ching was her nephew. However, Chu Ching told his mom that he wanted to talk with her privately. Chu Ching's mom immediately fired the lady and brought Chu Ching to her office. There she told him that his father had informed her about the incident involving Chu Xiao the previous night. She asked him to explain what had really happened. He described the whole situation to her, and she was surprised that he had gone to such a place to rescue his sister. Chu Ching assured his mother that both he and his sister were okay. To prove his ability to protect the family, he even demonstrated his martial arts skills to her. His mother was astonished and asked if Chen Shi had been teaching him martial arts, as she had noticed a significant change in him since he met her. Suddenly, Chen Shi arrived, saying she had heard about a problem at the company and had come to see if she could help. Chu Ching's mother informed her that someone had introduced a virus into the company's computer system, causing a system-wide paralysis. The technical department was already working on fixing the issue. Chu Ching suggested that Hua Hua could help with the problem. When Hua Hua arrived, she seemed afraid to face Chen Shi who was still upset with her. Chu Ching asked Chen Shi if she could help him obtain a gun, as he intended to use it to deal with Wang Chuan's threats and help his sister with her issues involving the mayor. He said his goodbyes to Chen Shi and mentioned he wanted to check on Hua Hua. This made Chen Shi angry, and she took him aside to discuss things privately. She warned him not to interfere when she was dealing with any woman who got close to him. Chu Ching had left and made his way to Vermilion Bird Road in search of his sister's boyfriend's house. He wanted to find out whether this guy was on his sister's side or if he was like his father, the mayor. This way he could figure out how to handle the situation. Upon arriving at the house, he was surprised to find Tang Xian there. He met her and she inquired why he hadn't been attending school. She believed it had something to do with what her mother had done to him and his mom's company. Chu Ching assured her that his absence had nothing to do with her, he simply needed a break. He then asked about Meng Zui, and Tang Xian informed him that Meng Zui was the second among the ten masters in Jinmen and was involved in some major illegal dealings in the city. She shared important details about the other masters with Chu Ching, who started thinking about seeking information from Hua Hua. Chu Ching decided to visit Hua Hua's place, and there, Hua Hua attempted to seduce him. He told her he had come for something else. He asked for her help in gathering all the important information about the Ming family to keep his sister safe. Suddenly, Chen Shi arrived. Chu Ching, thinking there was an intruder, quickly grabbed his sword and prepared to attack, but he stopped when he saw it was her. He asked her how she managed to get in when he had locked the door, and she told him she had the key. Chu Ching took the key from her and threw it in the trash, telling her not to bully Hua Hua anymore. She got angry and left. After a while, she returned with a gun. Chu Ching tried to calm her, but she fired at them. Chu Ching shielded Hua Hua and rushed towards Chen Shi to stop her. She then gave him the gun, as he had asked earlier. He saw that the gun was suitable for the third level Wang Chuan bullet he had received from Gong Yue, so he accepted it. Chen Shi said she would be staying for the night and got very affectionate, which made Hua Hua feel jealous. Chai Ching suggested that she watch a movie while he and Hua Hua tackled his homework. They were busy collecting information about the Xing family's house. Chen Shi, having some suspicions about their relationship, kept interrupting them. This made Chu Ching quite upset, so he eventually carried her to her car and gently pushed her inside. As he attempted to leave, she pulled him back in, and they began to engage in a romantic moment. After they completed their deed, Chu Ching attempted to distance himself from Chen Shi, who was quite insistent on being in a relationship with him. However, she recognized that Chu Ching was different from other men, and believed he would soon pursue her. Chu Ching simply smiled and walked away. Chen Shi asked him to act like a 17-year-old, but Chu Ching reminded her that she hadn't treated him as underage in the car. When the topic of marriage came up, Chu Ching pondered what kind of dowry Chen Shi wanted. She excitedly declared that she wanted all of Jinmen. Chu Ching assured her not to worry and left. He returned to Qi Hua Hua to continue their activities. Soon after, Chu Ching went to the Xing family's house and sneaked in. He almost got caught by a granny named Xing Wei, who was the top expert in Jingmen. He peeked through the window and saw Xiao Tao looking at a picture of his sister. Chu Ching figured out that Xiao Tao still had feelings for his sister, so he decided to go in and talk to him. Inside, Xiao Tao blamed himself for getting Chu Xiao involved in his troubles. He explained that his mom was trying to force him into marrying Tang Xian. This shocked Chu Ching, and he asked Xiao Tao to help him arrange a meeting with his mom so he could talk to her. He suggested that Xiao Tao distract Xing Wei for 30 minutes while he went to see his mom. Chu Ching went into a lady's room and waited for her while she bathed. When she finished and returned to the room, she found him on the bed wearing a mask. She smiled and moved towards him, thinking he was the new guy sent by the Li family. Chu Ching felt like he was being treated like a plaything, it seemed like everyone wanted to be intimate with him. 
he butted her head, and she lost consciousness. Afterward, he went to Xiao Tao's mom, Xing Li's office. While this was happening, Xiao Tao pretended to be considering taking his own life, so Xing Wei left to handle the situation. This allowed Chu Qing to enter the office. He revealed himself as Chu Xiao's brother and requested Xing Li to permit Xiao Tao and his sister to get married. However, she insisted that Xiao Tao couldn't marry someone from a less respectable family background. During their conversation, she noticed he had a particular type of bullet called a third-level Wang Chuan bullet and found it amusing. Chu Ting was taken aback and tried to grab the gun to shoot her, but she was quicker. She kicked him and took the gun from him. He praised her skills and mentioned that if only his family had even half the status of the Tang family, she might allow Xiao Tao to marry his sister. Xing Li noticed that the bullet in the gun was from the Gong family and inquired if he was related to them. Chu Ching responded by revealing his engagement with the Gong family. To prove it, he showed her a marriage contract between her and Gong Yue. After inspecting it, she realized he was the grandson of Mrs. Chu. She used to tell him that his mother was an outcast in the Chu family and lived in Jingmen just to survive. Chu Ching suggested they forget about the Chu family and talk about something else. He gave back the contract to her, and he ripped it into pieces. She explained that she was kind to him because he was Chuan Lan's grandson, and Chuan Lan was someone she respected. Then, Xing Wei returned and told her that her daughter was missing. She got very angry, grabbed Chu Ching by the neck and lifted him, demanding to know where her daughter was. He tried to negotiate, asking her to forgive his sister, but she refused and said she would murder him instead. She ordered Xing Wei to search for her daughter, since she believed she was still somewhere around the house. He checked his phone and was surprised that Hua Hua hadn't given him any feedback on what he had asked her to do. Xing Li suspected he was trying to call someone to come to his rescue. About an hour later, she didn't see any support, so she questioned him about the delay. He explained he had come prepared with a backup plan. She playfully teased him for thinking he still had a chance to succeed. She proudly mentioned her expertise as a fourth grade master in the realm of heroes. He responded that her skills didn't make her invulnerable. This revelation surprised her, and she attempted to make a phone call. Just then, Xing Wei returned with news that they had located her daughter. Meanwhile, Hua Hua had already sent a picture of a man to Chu Qing. Xing Li tried to attack him, but he showed her the man's picture, leaving her shocked. Xing Wei also attempted to attack him, but he threatened to harm the man if they tried to harm him. Tsang Li decided to negotiate and asked for his terms. He proposed that his sister marry Xiao Tao. She agreed, but with the condition that his sister must buy a house on Xiangke Street within a year. If she failed, she would marry into the Xing family. Chu Qing asked her to put this agreement in writing and instructed her to tell Meng Zui to back off. He started to leave, but she asked him to wait. She told him to keep everything about the man a secret. She gave him back his gun and handed him three third grade Wang Chuan bullets as gifts. On his way back, he spotted Xing Li's daughter. She started yelling at him for hurting her and tried to slap him. But he blocked her hand and told her not to bother him. She then confessed that she was the one who had caused pain to his sister. Upon hearing this, he slapped her hard and said it was for his sister. Xing Wei attempted to fight him, but Xing Li intervened and let him go. As he left, he commented to Xing Li that her children lacked discipline. Tsang Li then instructed Xing Wei to send Liu to a Wang Chuan training camp and find a good teacher for Tao. Xing Wei protested, expressing concern that Liu might face harsh training at the camp and could even die. Xing Li responded by implying that Liu's life was of little value and suggested that nothing should prevent Xiao Tao from inheriting the family. She now believed that men were just as capable as women influenced by how Chu Qing behaved. This revelation left Xing Wei shocked and made her wonder if Chu Qing had influenced Xing Li's views. Cho Hai returned to Hua Hua and her emotions welled up when she saw him. She had been afraid that he wouldn't survive. He told her he'd been roughed up by two old ladies and needed some rest. The next morning he got a call from Tang Ziyan while lying in bed. She asked why he hadn't gone to school yet and he said he was sick and couldn't make it to school. Ziyan warned him that the teacher might call his parents if he skipped, which surprised him. She reminded him about his bet with the homeroom teacher to make it to the top 10 in her test. In a hurry, he jumped out of bed and dashed to school just as the teacher was about to begin the test. He apologized for being late and took his seat for the exam. After the test, Song Chaoran asked him if he was confident about making it into the top 10. Chu Qing reassured her, saying he had answered all the questions. Tang Ziyan and Tao Yunyao approached them, and Yunyao started teasing Song Chaoran for flirting with Ziyan's guy. Xian stopped her and asked if he'd join them for lunch. Chu Qing agreed and invited Song Chaoran, but she declined and left, seemingly scared. Chu Qing then noticed Ye Mao, who seemed too shy to confess his feelings to Yun Yao. Ye Mao tried to sneak away, but Chu Qing caught him and brought him along. Xian once asked Chu Qing if he was Chen Shi's brother. 
Chu Ching felt a bit awkward and decided to join Ye Mao for lunch to avoid the question. During the meal, Xian inquired if Chu Ching truly believed he could make it to the top 10. Chu Ching responded, saying he wasn't sure. Xian then asked if he had been spending time with Chen Shi lately, but Chu Ching claimed to be too busy and quickly changed the subject, suggesting that Ye Mao should express his feelings to Yun Yao. He Mao felt embarrassed, and Chu Ching asked Yun Yao for her opinion about him. She challenged Chu Ching to confess his own feelings first if he wanted to know how she felt about Ye Mao. In a hurry, Chu Ching admitted he liked Xian. Xian questioned him about what Chen Shi meant to him if he claimed to like her. Chu Ching replied that there was no rule against liking more than one person, which angered Xian and led to a kick. How's Yun Yao began to say she didn't like Ye Mao. He hastily confessed that he loved her and shared childhood memories of her excelling in food contests, which had attracted him to her. Yun Yao suddenly realized who he was and became embarrassed. She playfully tapped Ye Mao's head with food and left. Xian left as well, leaving Ye Mao and Chu Ching at the table. Ye Mao then told Chu Ching how awkward he felt and requested a warning next time so he could prepare mentally. Chu Ching came home one day and he was quite surprised to find Hua Hua having a chat with his mom. His mom told him that she had invited Hua Hua over for dinner to thank her for helping with a company issue. She then mentioned that she wanted to talk to him in private, and he followed her into a room. In that room, his mom began asking him about his relationship with Hua Hua. Chu Ching replied that they were just friends. His mom, however, expressed her suspicion that there might be something more between them. She brought up the fact that he used to like Chen Shi, and now he's with another girl. His mother emphasized the importance of him having some self-respect, especially as a young man. Chu Ching countered by telling her that he planned to marry both into the family. His mom couldn't believe what she was hearing and called him crazy. Chu Ching stood his ground, reminding her that he was a grown man and that she should be advising his older sister who had a boyfriend. She informed him that his sister had been on the phone all day and asked him to call her for dinner. Chu Ching headed to his sister's room and had a video call with Xing Tao. After a while she ended the call and informed him that Xing Tao had mentioned that his mom had agreed to their relationship. She thanked him for his help, but he asked her if she could meet Xing Li's condition of acquiring a house on Zhukui Street within a year. If she couldn't, she'd have to marry into their family. This news shocked Chu Xiao, but Chu Qing reassured her that he had a plan to make it happen. He advised her to focus on helping their mom at the company to lighten her workload. Returning to Hua Hua, Chu Qing inquired if she'd like to work at his mom's company. She replied with an enthusiastic yes, and Chu Qing sealed the moment with a kiss. Meanwhile, his mom observed them from her room. Hua Hua felt embarrassed when she realized she had seen them, so she hurried back home. Chu Ching went back inside and talked to his mom about wanting Hua Hua to work at their company. His mom replied that there were no job openings, but Chu Ching suggested they expand the company and create a new department for her to manage. His mom asked why he wanted the company to grow so much, and he explained it was for the Chu family. He also mentioned he wouldn't marry into the Gong family and wasn't afraid of Chu Anlan. His mom silenced him and told him to go back to his room immediately. Later, she went to his room to apologize for being too harsh. She admitted that she had been patient with them, giving them an advantage over her. But that was going to change. Chu Ching thought he only had to deal with Meng Zui, so he headed to her place. He handed her the letter that Xing Li had given him, instructing her to leave his sister alone. Meng Zui asked him how he managed to do that, but he didn't respond and attempted to leave. Suddenly, she approached him from behind and grabbed him seductively. Chu Ching kissed her, but she forcefully pushed him away. She then used her power to hold him and grabbed him by the neck, demanding to know why he kissed her. Chu Ching had just managed to break free from her grip. He warned her that she'd regret her actions. She insisted on an apology and payment for what he'd done. Reluctantly, Chu Ching said, sorry, but she was persistent about the money. Surprisingly, she brought up the money he was supposed to pay when he'd saved his sister the other day. Chu Ching claimed he had no money, so she suggested he give her his sword instead. He said he didn't have it with him, but she didn't buy it. She reminded him that he had made the sword appear seemingly out of thin air last time. Curious about the technique, she proposed to forget about the money and the sword if he taught her how to hide it. Chu Ching thought she was too greedy and summoned his gun, taking a shot at her. To his surprise, she resisted the Wang Chuan bullets and revealed her own special gun. To appease her, Chu Ching offered a hundred spirit stones just like he'd given her last time. However, she declined saying it wasn't enough. So he tossed an item to her, which boosted her power once she absorbed it. She wanted more and Chu Ching promised to give her something about the size of his fist. Finally, she allowed him to leave, and as he departed, she smirked. 
playfully claiming she would make him her loyal companion who'd never escape her grasp. On the other side of things, Chu Ching had his own plans. He aimed to conquer and bring her into his family through marriage. The following day, Chu Ching visited his mother's workplace to check on how Hua Hua was doing in her new job. Hua Hua had won the admiration and respect of her colleagues for her outstanding work. Playfully, Chu Ching teased her by calling her director. However, Hua Hua revealed that she had initially asked Chu Ching's mom for a technical consultant position, but instead, she was made the director. Afterward, Chu Ching headed to school, where he noticed a lot of hushed conversations among the students. Ye Mao approached him and delivered the news that the test scores had been published, and there was a rumor that Chu Ching hadn't made it to the top 10. He asked if Chu Ching was ready to deliver an apology speech at the assembly the next morning. Chu Ching, however, refused to accept that he didn't make it to the top 10. Inside the classroom, his homeroom teacher, Tong Fei, asked him to bring his parents to school the next day. Chu Ching protested, confident that he had secured a spot in the top 10. The teacher disclosed that Chu Ching had ranked first in the class but 11th in the entire grade, and she even accused him of cheating to achieve that. Chu Ching demanded evidence to support the cheating accusation, and teacher Tong suggested they review the security camera footage in the security room. Xian and Yun Yao joined them as they examined the test footage from the classroom. To their surprise, they found no evidence of cheating, leaving teacher Tong in shock. Chu Ching drew everyone's attention to a student who had cheated, leading to that student being summoned to the security room. The principal instructed the director to handle the situation, and they left together. The director apologized to Chu Ching for the inconvenience caused, and they all exited the security room. On their way back, Xian congratulated Chu Ching for achieving a spot in the top 10, making him the first male to do so. He was surprised, and Xian explained that one of the girls in the top 10 had been disqualified for cheating, which elevated him to the 10th position. Everyone started to admire Chu Ching for being the first male in the top 10 and for his connection with Xian. Many days after the cheating incident, teacher Tong introduced a new student, Li Yu Wei, to the class. Chu Ching was shocked because he remembered that Li Yu Wei used to be Xian's fiance. After class, Chu Ching talked with Xian about Li Yu Wei joining their school, and she asked him if he felt jealous. He denied it, and Xian gave him a quick kiss. Meanwhile, Li Yu Wei secretly watched them, becoming both jealous and angry. Chuobukun and the others ran into Chu Ching and told him that Li Yu Wei had been spreading rumors to tarnish his reputation. They offered to take him to confront Li Yu Wei or even give him a beating, but Chu Ching declined, not wanting to cause trouble. He believed that the real issue was Xian's mother and pondered how to win her over. Yu Kun informed Chu Ching that they had been diligently practicing the cultivation technique he taught them, and they hadn't experienced any negative side effects. They discussed their progress and received encouragement from Chu Ching. He also gave them spirit stones to aid in their cultivation. Afterward, Chu Ching hid in some nearby bushes and contemplated whether he could ever leave this world, considering the people he cared about. Yun Yao, Ye Mao, and Chu Ching had lunch together, with Xian joining them, and Li Yu Wei reluctantly tagging along. Xian sat next to Chu Ching, making Li Yu Wei envious and seeking her attention. Eventually, Xian left for the restroom, and Li Yu Wei warned Chu Ching to stay away from Xian reminding him of the last time he tried to harm him with his bodyguards. Xian encountered him when he was upset and making threats to Chu Ching. She promptly asked him to leave. Chu Ching, feeling proud, mentioned how he had assisted Xian and asked how she planned to thank him. Xian responded that it was his duty as her boyfriend to keep other men away. Li Yu Wei showed Chu Ching's photo to a hitman, requesting Chu Ching's assassination. Later, as Chu Ching was walking to his car, he received a message from Meng Zui with a picture of his sister. This startled him, and he wondered if Meng Zui had gone back on their agreement and captured his sister. However, after calling her, he found out she was safe. Right after ending the call and getting into his car, Chu Ching sensed something was wrong. He swiftly exited the vehicle, and it exploded moments later. He left the scene in a taxi and phoned Zhuo Bukun, asking him to review the parking lot's security footage to identify the person responsible for the attack. Chu Ching visited Meng Zui's place. He was curious if Meng Zui's people had tried to blow up his car. Upon entering, he noticed that Meng Zui had become stronger recently. He inquired about her reasons for seeking him, but she didn't offer a clear explanation. Wanting to leave, he made a move, but she swiftly approached and halted him. Unexpectedly, she tore his clothes off, and he accused her of seeking him out solely for her own desire. She admitted her attraction, and Chu Ching drew her nearer initiating their romantic connection. She asked him to be her companion and safeguard his sword and its secret. Chu Ching questioned if she would forgive him for any mistakes, to which she promised not to hold grudges. Then she urged him to reveal his sword's secret immediately. However, he mentioned she couldn't be upset after he showed her something, piquing her curiosity about what he had in store. 
He broke the glass walls of her apartment and flew out, escaping her grasp. Meng Zui became angry and told him she would murder him when they met next. She mentioned that his sister still worked as a bartender in the complex, suggesting she could get her revenge through her. Chu Ching called Zhuo Bukun to inquire about the person who damaged his car. Zhuo Bukun informed him that it was someone hired by Li Yu Wei. He also shared that Li Yu Wei was scheduled to pick someone up from the airport by midnight. Chu Ching got angry and set out to find Li Yu Wei. However, on his way, Tang Xian intercepted him. She tried to persuade him not to confront Li Yue due to the potential consequences it could have on both the Li and Ye families. Despite her concerns, he remained resolute and told her not to worry about his problems. As he departed, he encountered Chen Shi. She explained her mom had pressured her to come and halt him, but now she wanted to stand by his side. Aunt Ye arrived shortly after, advising Chu Qing against his plans. She was grateful for his previous help, yet she thought it wasn't the right time. However, he insisted he could handle the Li and Tang families to earn respect for the Yi family in the future. Xian's mom appeared and bluntly urged Chu Ching to stop talking. Ignoring her, he proceeded to leave. This infuriated her and she attempted to attack him. But Aunt Ye intervened, insisting that she had to go through her first. At the airport, Chu Ching spotted an elderly woman who was an expert guarding Li Yu Wei. Li Yu Wei was surprised that Chu Ching was still alive and inquired about his presence. Chu Ching told him he had come to eliminate him, but the elderly woman interrupted instructing them to take the fight outside. Once outside, the elderly woman revealed her rank as fourth in the Li family and launched an attack. Chu Qing dodged the attack, then counterattacked with more strikes. He defended against all her moves with his sword skills. Afterward, he launched a flurry of sword attacks at her. She got distracted and tried to block them, but Chu Qing suddenly appeared in front of her and stabbed her, ending her life. Li Yu Wei's other bodyguard tried to shoot him, but he was faster. He swiftly summoned his gun and shot both of them with the Wang Chuan bullet, taking their lives. He also took the flower Li Yu Wei was carrying and wondered if he had caught a big fish, as Li Yu Wei had come to the airport with a master's protection to greet someone. Meanwhile, there was a clash between the Tang and Ye families. Lian, the head of the Li family, arrived with their elder. Lian ordered Aunt Ye to leave and go save her son, but she refused. Their argument escalated and Aunt Ye attempted to attack but Meng Zui stepped in between them. She had been surprised to find three influential families gathered in one place. She sarcastically asked if they were choosing the ruler of Jinmen City. The elder from the Li family tried to attack her, but Meng Zui swiftly injured her with a single blow. This left them all shocked. She made it clear that she had no business with them and stated her mission was to eliminate someone. Xian's mother inquired about the target, and she revealed the person was at the airport. Lei Yan offered to accompany Meng Zui to the airport, providing her with some high-level healing medicines. Meanwhile, at the airport, Chu Qing warmly welcomed the guest Li Yu Wei had been waiting for. She asked why Li Yu Wei wasn't there to pick her up, and he callously informed her that he had already murdered him. He then rendered her unconscious and transported her out of the airport. Once outside, he spotted a car and placed her inside. As he drove away, he noticed Li Yan and Meng Zui driving towards him. In response, he raised his gun and opened fire at them. They escaped from their cars, but Li Yan got hurt while Meng Zui was unhurt. Meng Zui allowed Chu Qing to get away. As Chu Qing kept on driving, he phoned Chen Shi to pick up his family and let them stay at the Ye family's big house for a few days. Chen Shi checked with her mom, who agreed, hoping that Chu Qing would keep his promise to make Jinmen respect the Ye family in the future. Li Yan found out that Meng Zui also wanted to murder Chu Qing and suggested they team up to go after him together. She was surprised to learn that Meng Zui had let Chu Qing escape, and Meng Zui explained that Chu Qing could only meet his end at her hands, and no one else's. Li Yan said she would let him go but eliminate anyone close to him. She brought out the Cheyenne reagent and applied it to her wound. She realized that the medicine was subpar even though it was made using the Tang family's recipe, compared to what the Tang family produced themselves. She then decided she needed to bring an important person from the imperial capital to take down the Tang family. Li Yan questioned her subordinate about an important person from the imperial capital. The response she received was that Chu Qing had left with that individual. This news greatly angered her. Meanwhile, Chu Qing realized he could be easily traced using the car and the lady's phone. In response, he decided to stop and destroy both their cell phones. He then took the lady to the Yunjiang River in the Yunshan Mountain area and tossed her into the river to revive her. Chu Qing justified this action by thinking that in this world, Women should not be treated with gentleness. He believed that having a soft heart in this situation could lead to his demise. The lady eventually regained consciousness and was frightened, initially believing she had passed on to the afterlife. Later, she realized she was still alive and scolded Chu Qing. In his quest for information, Chu Qing subjected her to torment as he demanded to know her name. She reluctantly revealed that her name was Qiao Wei. 
he had questioned her further, and when she refused to speak, he resorted to torture. She explained that she used to be a student specializing in medicine and that Li Yan had hired her to develop drugs. However, he found it hard to believe that a prestigious family like the Lees would hire a college student. He then took her to a more secluded part of the river on a dock and threatened to throw her in for the fish to devour if she didn't talk. He inquired about why the Lee family had shown interest in her, and she revealed that she was a student at the National University. She had been released against her will by the university when a powerful family demanded her presence. He suggested they go together to get her some fresh clothes, but she claimed her leg was numb and she couldn't stand. To escape, she pulled him, causing them both to tumble into the river. Fearful, she offered to work for him, secretly planning to concoct poison to murder him. Chu Qing took her out of the water, and soon she fell asleep next to him, feeling his comforting warmth. At the same time, Meng Zui ordered her followers to go and snatch Chu Xiao. As Chu Xiao walked home after her job, some women approached her, attempting to harm her. Another group of women from the Tang family rushed in to rescue her. As they escorted her away, a different group of women arrived and fought the ones from the Tang family. Chu Xiao recognized one of them, Sister Nan, who informed her that the boss had asked her to work overtime. Li Yan was at Chu Qing's house. She and her subordinate searched everywhere but couldn't find any of his family members. She suspected Ye Qingmei, Chen Qi's mom, had acted before her arrival, so she headed to Qingmei's place. When she met Ye Qingmei, Li Yan demanded that she harm Chu Qing's family, or else she would retaliate against Qingmei's family. However, Qingmei responded by mentioning that Chu Qing had once saved her life. Chu Qing woke up Chao Wei the following day and brought her to his house. When they arrived, he found his place all messed up and vowed to make those responsible pay for it a hundred times over. Then, they went to the Ye family's house. Upon reaching there, Chen Shi, excited to see that Chu Qing was okay, rushed to hug him. Chu Qing introduced Chao Wei to Chen Shi and told her to take good care of Chao Wei, ensuring no one could harm her or let her escape. He also inquired about his parents. Chen Shi assured him they were fine but mentioned that his sister had been taken by Meng Zui's associates. This surprised him and he scolded his sister for not staying with their mom's company and instead going to Meng's bar. He instructed Chen Shi to keep his whereabouts a secret from everyone and make it seem like he had gone missing. When asked about his sister, he reassured Chen Shi that Meng Zui wouldn't harm her, he was just using her as bait. Chu Qing asked about Chen Shi's family, and she explained that they lost 30% of their forces in a battle against the Li family, but the berserk pills helped prevent further losses. She also mentioned her third aunt, Ye Mei, had caused some trouble over it. Chu Qing knew Ye Mei was doing this because she wanted to become the head of the Ye family. To maintain secrecy, Chu Qing changed his appearance, wearing a mask and pretending to be Mr. Jian, his own master. He asked Chen Shi to take him to her mom under this disguise. Chen Xi took him to her mom, and as they were going, a little boy named Xiao Lair approached them in a childlike manner, asking for Chu Qing's masks. Chen Xi promised to get him one. After the boy left, Chu Qing explained to her that Xiao Lair was sent to find out who he was. Chen Shi was surprised and mentioned that Xiao Lair's mother is close to Ye Mei. When they met Qing Mi, Chen Shi introduced him as Mr. Jian, Chu Qing's teacher, which surprised Qing Mi. She invited him to sit down and asked why he had come to visit. Qing Mi explained that the Li family had been mistreating his student, and he had come to support him. Chen Shi then inquired why he was seeking the Ye family, and he showed her a pill, claiming it would benefit their family. He mentioned that the Tang family was influential because they could make medicine, and that the Li family, having obtained the Tang family's recipe, intended to put them out of business and ruin them. He didn't want the Li family to take control, so he offered to establish a company to produce medicines while the Ye family paid for the raw materials. Suddenly, Ye Mei arrived. Qing Mei had introduced Mr. Zhang as the foreign aide she had invited. Chu Qing informed her that he had become uncomfortable and wanted to leave. She instructed Chen Shi to see him off and Ye Mei also told her daughter, Meyer, to accompany him as he departed. During the journey, Meyer began asking numerous questions, which started to irritate Chen Shi. Eventually, Chen Shi became angry and asked her to be quiet. Then, Xiao Lair showed up with a bunch of candies. Chu Qing playfully teased him asking for some candies, but Xiao Lair refused to share them with him. This upset Meyer, who pushed the little boy away. Chu Qing continued to tease Xiao Lair, inquiring about where he got the candies, and expressing interest in buying some. Xiao Lair revealed that Mayer had given them to him. Quickly changing the subject, Chu Qing got angry and slapped Mayer, telling her to mind her own business. Cheng Xi and Chu Qing left together in a car, and as they drove, Cheng Xi received a message from her mom informing her that she had accepted the offer but with a condition. 
Chen Shi's older sister had to run the company. Chu Qing was surprised, he didn't know Chen Shi had a sister because he had never seen her during his previous visits. Chen Shi informed him that her sister had been away for two years, traveling the world. She had left home shortly after her husband, who had recently married her, died in a car accident. Cheng Xi warned Chu Qing not to try to flirt with her sister, and he promised not to. They soon reached a checkpoint, and Chen Shi was surprised to see military intelligence personnel wearing traffic police uniforms. Chu Qing quickly used an invisibility technique to become unseen before it was their turn. After passing the checkpoint, Chen Shi was amazed and wondered where Chu Qing had learned such tricks. Later Chu Qing realized they were being followed and told Chen Shi to drive slowly. That's it for this part. If you liked the video, please comment below.